So we're going to talk about uh, today these setups that we do that are really a, a much lower exposure trade setup than almost anything there is out there. And when I say lower exposure, I'm talking about time in a trade. Okay, when the longer you're in a trade, the the more stressful that trade becomes. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to talk about. So we got a, a, our full risk disclosure. You guys have probably seen all of this. Don't trade with money you can't afford to lose. Information is educational purposes only. Trading is very risky. You may lose some or all or more than your original investment in trading capital. Only trade capital that you can afford to lose and past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. There, the lawyers are happy. All right, so here's what we're going to do today over the next 45 minutes, hour or so. We're going to talk about why we would want to limit our exposure. In these trades, what are we looking for? What, uh, what do these trade setups look like and how do we qualify these setups? And what does an order look like when we place an order? Okay, we're going to talk about our targets and stops. Talk a bit about trade management and then variations of the trade. It's There's basically, you know, even though we have different names for different trade setups, it's really all one thing that we're doing. There's just different variations of that same thing. So it's kind of nice that you really don't have to learn a whole lot of different stuff as it relates to the logic of what we're doing. Yes, this is being recorded and will be emailed out to you. So the logic goes all the way back to the beginning of, of when we started trading our, our type of trades, which we call pullback trading. Okay. And we have different ways of entering pullback trades based on different information. And we've gotten pretty darn good at it. And I'll show you the trade room results um, uh, at, a little bit later as we get towards the end. I'll show you the type of results that we've had over the last three years in our trade room. 2023 is not over yet. I can't give you the results for 2023 when I don't have it yet. So I'm giving you the last three years, 2020, 2021, and 2022. As soon as we have 2023 finished, then we'll add that. So then we're going to talk about our special offer and then Q&A all along the way. All right. So why limited exposure? When I was a struggling trader, which I was for about seven years, everything was emotional for me. If price ticked up, I got emotional. If it ticked down, I got emotional. If it went, if it was going way against me and it was almost at my stop, I was extremely emotional. If it got way ahead, and I started thinking, well, before it changes directions or before it makes my target, I should stop. I should take the money and run. But then I, you don't. And then you lose. And then it goes the other way. And you start stressing because, oh, I was thinking I should have taken it off. And I didn't take it off. And now I'm losing money. And OK. When you limit your exposure, your time exposure in a trade. You don't have time for all of that. What we're doing is we're taking the information that is inside the current bar. We're comparing it to the previous, I don't know, uh, maybe 10 bars. And we're using that information that's coming into the markets right now. It's, it's the most current information. Because that information is going to it tells us what's about to happen right now. Okay, not 10, 20, 30 minutes from now. All right, right now. And if the reaction that we're expecting right now doesn't happen, 
then we start to exit the trade uh, pretty quickly, okay? Which leads to a much lower stress type of a system. We had a trader in the room today talking about how different it was for him that he'd been trading for a long time and how strange it was between trades to just be relaxed. Hey, Charles. To just be relaxed and and just sit and wait for a confluence of conditions to help us to help identify a trade setup. And until we have that, there is nothing to do. And so you just relax. There's no stressing. Your money is safe, right? Your money is not in the markets. It's safe. So like I said, we're looking for those immediate reactions. There's no waiting and wondering and hoping. How many people have used hope as part of their their trading when, when they get into a trade? How many of you have enough time to hope that trade goes in your favor? You know, hope is not a real good uh, trading partner. It's not a, a real good thing to have in your trading plan. So instead of hope, if we don't have the conditions happen immediately, we have a plan on what to do next, okay? There are very few rules, so it makes it really easy to master. Let me, let me revise that. Nothing is easy, okay? Trading is not easy. But it's, it's, it's a, you have a systematic way to master this, ty this type of trading uh, system and trading style and this type of trade setup. Because as you'll see, it's the same thing over and over and over again. Remember that old Dunkin' Donuts commercial where the guy says, got to get up to make the donuts, got to make the donuts. I know. Some of you are too young to remember that. But that's what we do essentially every day is we get up, we just wait for the donut machine, and then we get our donuts, and that's it. Okay, so it's a very straightforward type of trading that doesn't take, uh, you know, all of these different, you know, different uh, uh, types of charts and different time frames and you know, all these different tools and just a whole bunch of stuff. I used to think trading was all about stuff. You know, the more stuff you had, the closer you were getting to being a successful trader. That's what I thought, but never quite got there. So the, lo <laughs> the longer you are in a trade, the more speculative that trade becomes because when you got into that trade, you got into that trade based on the conditions at that moment. And while you're in that trade, so many influences are in the market changing those conditions or, or have the potential to come in and change those conditions. To the point where the information you used to get into the trade is no longer relevant, yet you're in the trade and maybe it's even gotten ahead a little bit and you're inclined to stay in the trade because that's what maybe the rules of that particular trade says. But the longer you're in the water, the more likely the sharks are going to find you, right? I mean, if you don't want to get eaten by sharks, you you don't go into deep water and you don't stay in very long. And that's that's what it boils down to having a very low stress type of trading. All right, so what are we looking for in these trades? All right. <clears throat> we have very specific events that happen on 
the current bar. Okay, so we're watching one minute charts. Okay, we're on, we use one minute charts. Again, we use a, a fast chart because the information that's coming in now is the most accurate information we can get about what's about to happen. So we use one minute charts. We will look at the current bar and relate it to the previous about 10 bars and say, based on the last 10 bars, what does this current bar tell us? Okay, so, and then we look for specific things that we're reading inside the current bar. Okay, so one of them is momentum. Now, why would we want to? Why would we want to know when price is uh, has strong momentum? Well, when what happens with momentum? It always stops. And the, the longer momentum has been going, the more imminent the exhaustion, okay? So we want to read momentum so we can anticipate exhaustion. And that's a perfect place for us is where momentum fades and exhaustion sets in. So we want to read those two and then we want to also see the rate at which the orders are being processed. If we see an extremely high rate, again, we're just going to go back maybe 10 bars. So relative to the rate of orders being processed, so relative to the rate of orders being processed over the last 10 or so bars, what does the rate of orders being processed in this bar tell us? Okay, so what we're looking for is the rate that is, is most likely um, being uh, manipulated, that the bar, the price is being manipulated by a sudden increase in the rate of orders. What we're looking for is a rate of orders being processed that is unlikely us little retail traders you, you and me with our PC, desktop PCs, um, and our, our home internet service, that we're able to process orders through the exchange that fast, okay? And if we're not doing it, who is? It's likely one of the people that get the, um, you know, the luxury of being able to be next to or inside the exchange and process orders very quickly. We need to know when they're doing that again so we can anticipate exhaustion. We're also looking for churning volume. So I have people ask me, why don't I see volume on your charts? You actually do, and I'll show you. Um, volume is, you know, in and of itself is what everybody looks at, and everybody knows everybody's looking at that. So I'm only looking for a particular type of volume, okay? And when I say churning volume, that means when I see that first there was, if we're if the price is going up, I see a lot of buying, 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 buying. And then suddenly the buyers start to get a little exhausted right about it when they come into an area where the sellers are, have been sitting. And there's this kind of overlap area where the buyers and sellers start fighting each other when the buyers are exhausted and the sellers have not they're just been sitting there waiting so you get a churning buying selling buying selling that's a great place to identify that price is likely to change directions okay we can see this visually on a chart by an up thrust or a down thrust bar i'll show you those also if it happens near an area of support or resistance and we have that exhaustion set in, we can anticipate price is going to react to that line of support or resistance because it won't be strong enough to cross it because of exhaustion, okay? And then here's the big one. Here's the kicker for us. This is, this is the one that changed the game for us. Divergence. On the open of the next bar, we'll know 
if we have a condition of divergence, and that is divergence of price and momentum. And if you want to learn more about that, you can search our our YouTube site for um, our divergence uh, webinars, and it'll explain it a little bit more thoroughly. I'm just showing you the actual trade setups today, okay? Now, that being said, on Saturday, I haven't sent the invitation out yet for this, but we are going to have an event this Saturday, and see if I got this. Yeah. You can register for it right there. I put it in the chat. I'm going to show you one today. Okay, just one quick one today. On Saturday, I'll have a whole bunch of trades that we took this week. And I'll show you how we entered the trades and different ways to enter the trades. How you can work your way from single contract to multiple contracts, how you can either market in or limit in, although initially we want you to only limit in. But as you practice your trading and you become more skilled at your order entry, you can increase the number of contracts traded and the way you trade those contracts. So, if you want to see more about that, register for this event on Saturday and you'll see more of these trades. Like I said, I'll show you one in just a little while. But this is what our trade setups look like. We see them every day. All right. And this, this particular one is called our rock star setup. This is the one everybody loves. You start I think that the traders that trade with us see this picture and they start salivating because um, it, it it's so enticing. You just, you know, you feel really strongly about, oh, let me get my dot here. That's our, that's our rock star trade. All right. So we're looking at, in this particular setup, Typically, we're going to see prices channeling, right? Like this. This is in a channel, right? Price is just kind of drifting around, not really doing much. So then we're going to break out of that channel. And you notice the size of these bars, these bars relative to these bars. See how much bigger they are? So the, the bars start getting a, a bit bigger than the previous bars. So we can see a strong increase in momentum. So you notice that the, the inside of these bars are painted. This is our Mometer indicator that tells us when we have strong momentum. Like I said, the bars start becoming larger. Now, the ticks start coming in faster than we would normally anticipate us little guys are able to trade. This is called our speed tick. You'll hear me say oftentimes in the, in the room, nothing happens without a speed tick. So until you see a speed tick on a trade, there's not going to be a trade setup. So that's, that's the let's get ready for a trade indicator. Okay. Overbought. Okay. I love it when, when price becomes overbought. That's this pink outline. Notice, you know, typically if you want to know if something's overbought or oversold, you have to have a uh, an oscillator down here um, on your screen that's, you know, all of this. And so you know, you know, if it's in here, it's overbought. I removed all of that so that the information you need is right in front of you. It's right there. And you don't have to look anywhere else to decide if price is overbought or oversold. 
It's right there on the bar. Now, we, why do we want to know if it's overbought or oversold? Because that's where exhaustion is likely to set in. Okay, remember I said we have volume on the charts? That's that dot with the number two on it. All right, that's, that's a churning volume called our pullback alert that tells us that something's about to change. Okay? This is our major line of resistance. There's really nothing special other than um, floor trader pivots and mid pivots and a couple of other lines that we like to use. And we like to use the support and resistance lines that most people are looking at. All right? Because what gives support and resistance their value? What makes people respect support and resistance? Anybody know? What is it? Why does, why would this area have any value at all? It has value because people think it has value. Right? They've been using floor trader pivots since the beginning of time. And people still put value in that area for who knows why, whatever. It's just become one of those things that people believe in it. And if they believe in it, it's so. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So if we know other people, other traders are going to be paying attention then I think we should be paying attention to those lines as well. And then the bar opens with divergence. As it turns out, right here you see this 1D. This is our super D indicator. This tells us that price has diverged from the CCI um, oscillate, momentum oscillator. So price is doing this, but CCI is doing this. So when they've diverged, price is going to attempt to catch up with momentum, which is headed that way. All right, so it, even though price was going up, momentum was going down, and price will attempt to go down. All right? Amazing. So many people stop trading divergence because it's, it's kind of difficult to follow. It's hard to see. We've taken, again, in order to trade divergence, you have to have an oscillator at the bottom of your screen, and you have to see where, you know, oh, I'm setting a higher high here, and even though that's going that way and that's going that way, okay, well, that's divergence. You have to figure it out. Here, we'll figure it out for you. We'll tell you, okay, there's divergence, not just of one oscillator, could be seven oscillators. I rely on CCI absolutely to, as one of the seven momentum oscillators, to tell me when momentum has changed directions. So do I rely on CCI? No. Do I use it as a piece of information along with other pieces of information to help me make decisions? Yes. Absolutely. And it's a good one, too. All right, so placing your order. So we're going to look at one of these. And this is probably not the best one, but it's just one I grabbed. Um, but we'll see a lot more of these on Saturday. All right. So now you can see why they're, cut, they're fairly low exposure trades, because we're in and out. And seconds, sometimes. If we're in a trade for a minute or two, that's pretty rare. All right? Typically, it's 30 seconds or less. We make our money, we get in, and we get out. That is low exposure. All right, so I'm just going to let this play. And you can watch as price is climbing up here. Got all those conditions I was just telling you about. 
And how would I go about placing this trade? Now, on this particular one, you'll see how I would have scaled in if price, this is kind of an advanced trade that I'm showing you guys. Um, this is not how you would start out by learning. But I'll stop it here as it, as it progresses, or I'll try to. All right. So you see that price open here. And I'm going to put my order on. It actually moved, which is okay, because I also, so I got filled here. And I also, if there was still some momentum in that trade before it decided to turn, I would have gotten an order in here and an order in here, knowing that price is about to turn. No averaging yet. Um, I am working on an order entry platform that will part of be part of our essential add-on suite where we can do averaging. I will not... Uh, I do not average these until these orders get filled and then I'll average my target and my stop, okay? So that is a very short version of a more advanced type of trade entry or potential trade entry. See, I put on, I put on an order for three different, three different trades, but only one of them got filled. And that's okay. A lot of times I'll get all of them filled. So this is the kind of stuff we're going to see on Saturday, and we're going to see a whole lot of these. And there, there'll be trades that we took this week. All right, targets and stops. Everybody wants to know about targets and stops. First of all, we put we do have a bracket order. So you'll notice that when I entered that trade, we use a five tick target and a seven tick stop the five ticks is a hard target now the stop is managed if conditions change for example today got into a couple of different trades and if i think about it i'll i'll do a replay of these two trades um, one of my trades I got into, I ended up taking a minus four instead of a minus seven because I managed the trade and I shortened the stop and I shortened it because the conditions that we're expecting to happen right now doesn't always happen because that's trading, but it happens more than it doesn't. So when it doesn't happen, we go, uh-oh, well, that didn't, that didn't do what we had hoped it would do. So I'm going to try to get, I, I'm going to try to limit my exposure on this trade by shortening my stop. And I will shorten, shorten, shorten. Another trade I took today, I, I shortened it all the way to plus one. Okay, so the trade had started to go into my favor, but the conditions that got me into the trade changed. So I didn't want to really stay in that trade because the conditions no longer exist. So instead, I managed my stop to minus three, minus one, break even, plus one, and I would have kept going to plus two, plus three. Um, and if it hits target, great. If not, the very worst would have been a plus three. As it turns out for me, it was a plus one. I thought it was break even, but then I looked at my control panel and it was a uh, plus one. All right, so we manage our stop. So even though we start with a five tick target, we don't just sit on our hands and hope for the best and ac accept the worst. And we never make our stops bigger only smaller if you have anybody advising you to move your stops out you need to stop listening to that person if you ever move your stops further out because you just by golly i just know this trade's going to work out 
So I'm going to move my, I just need to give it a little bit more room. If you worked for me at my trading company and I gave you uh, a rule or, or your job description, which is the trade plan, and you did that, even though you knew you weren't supposed to, I would fire you because that's not your job. Your job is to execute the trade plan and that's it. Even working for your own company. The job is to execute your trade plan when you're trading. That's all you do. So we don't use runners. I've, you know, over the years I've done all of that. I put on the runners, I put on the trailing stops. When we think about the logic of what we're doing, runners and trailing stops make no sense. All right, here's another variation of that trade. This one's called the Naked Rockstar. And we call it Naked uh, because it no longer has that major line of support or resistance up here, right? There is no line. So we've removed that requirement, but in order to make it a safer trade, we've added some requirements for the naked rock star. Okay. So again, price is channeling bars are relatively small. Then the price breaks out. Breakout bars are a little bit bigger. Momentum increases. Bars become larger. Everything's the same so far. Got to have a speed tick. Now the requirement for this is that we're overbought where in the rockstar previously you'll notice it said that it was optional for this one it's not you must have an overbought condition and or one of the other the pullback alert okay those were both optional on the others so we have no major support or resistance, and now the bar opens with divergence, which will print our rock star. Okay, and we put on an, uh, a sell order there. Now what I'm doing here is I'm showing you these in reverse order that they were developed. The speed tick was one of the first pullback trades ever developed, and that was after I identified that um, price will bounce off of support and resistance lines that haven't been touched in a long time. So I started looking at other things and the speed tick, the, the rate of orders being processed was one of the first things that I, that I looked at. So this was the second, but most beneficial pullback trade that we started trading. So again, price is channeling, bars are small, price breaks out, all that's the same, momentum increases, bars are becoming larger. And are you, you're seeing the similarities here? It's not like you have to learn a whole bunch of different stuff for each setup. It's all the same stuff. It's just the trigger to get into the trade might be slightly different, okay? The only difference is that this bar right here is within five ticks of this line. That gives us some resistance. We can, we've already seen that this bar has reacted to this line, right? And that we, we see that this resistance is being respected by those that are trading here. Okay. Now, this bar opens within five ticks or less, that's a sell right there. And that's a speed tick trade setup. So you don't always have to have divergence. All right, so back, to, I was telling you about the, the results. This is the full year of 2020, 2021, and 2022. Now, please understand these are from experienced traders in our trade room. 
We have traders in our trade room that have been there 10 years or more. We have traders in our trade room that that's their first week. You will not get these kind of results until you have worked hard at your trading. Okay? You have to work at this. The thing is, is we have identified an edge. And this edge is undeniable because, again, we've been doing this for 15 years. But it doesn't, you, that doesn't mean that tomorrow you will start trading this successfully like a professional. You know, that's like, think of it like a sport, okay? If you decide you want to take up a sport and you want to get good at that sport, you better practice that sport if you want to get good at it. If I went out and told you how to play golf, here's a bunch of golf clubs, you swing the club, you hit the ball, you put it in the hole, okay? That's, you would have a, a, an unrealistic expectation of how difficult golf is. And you'd go out there and you'd, you'd learn that it's not as easy as, I, as it sounds. And this is not easy, but you know that the work you're doing is going to have value if you keep doing it because you're gaining a skill that most other people don't have and won't have because they haven't identified these very fast pullback trades. Or if they've identified them, they just kind of blow them off because it's, they think it's not enough money for them. So just so you understand that these results... This is all provided uh, educational purposes. We're not making any promises, express or implied about your success rate with trading with the intentional trader trading system or product. Okay, I'm showing you all of that so that you don't get unrealistic expectations about somebody just coming in and trading our system fresh. I'm leaving those on the on the uh, that information on the screen. So you don't think I'm trying to pull anything over on you. All right. Over the last three years, that's over 4,000 trades, three hours a day. All right. Uh, so that's a little over five and a half trades per session. Okay. So we trade so roughly a couple of trades an hour on average. Some days we'll trade five times an hour all day. Some, some days we have no trades for several hours. Uh, you just don't know. You take what you get. So the the uh, I showed you how we uh, we uh, shorten our stops if the conditions change. So our average profit target is always five. Average loss is you know around five also because of the management. And we've we've deducted all fees and commissions out of this this information. Okay. Now these are the instruments that we trade. These are the instruments we trade. And this one was last year. We changed to the NQ this year. Okay. So this will next uh, next year will have also have the NQ on here. So this is without the NQ. Okay. Now, you can win all the, these are the different trade setups, all right? This is our win-loss column. How many won, how many lost, and what the percentage is. And then our, our total percentage uh, average winning trade, okay? Simple. Now, Keith gave you, if you want to examine this more closely, Keith was nice enough to put in for you a, uh, a site on our a page on our website where you can look at these numbers more carefully. So seventy nine point one percent. That's that's not too bad, you know. And you're thinking you can't make money at that. We're looking at, you know, the the total result with wins and losses at around eighty seven thousand for a single contract. If you traded a single contract those three years, looking at about. 87,000 or so. Now, just do the math and start ramping it up, you know, and start maybe get it to where you're trading six, seven, eight contracts. Because you don't do anything different other than your order entry, which is scaling like what I showed you. 
But you don't do anything different. You just do the same trades over and over and over again, and you start adding contracts. But you still want to get out of trades as quickly as possible. The very lowest exposure possible. You want to get out of trades. All right? Now, don't forget. Saturday. Everybody got that? The link is in the chat. Or if you're watching this on video, it's down in the description down below. So register for our event. Come see a lot more of our trades and how it, what it looks like when we're really trading live in the trade room every day. I know I've, got, I've been getting uh, people asking about Black Friday, and I did send out a, a Black Friday email. But some people may have missed it. So we're going to just go ahead and do the Black Friday thing now so we don't have to wait until Friday. Um, but this is these are our three programs that we offer. Everybody, most people do either they start with one of the, the starter or extra income and then upgrade to ProTrader or they just jump in and go right to ProTrader because that includes everything. It includes everything that we have everything that we will ever have in the future meaning anything that we've developed in the past you get it anything we develop in the future you get it for free um our essential add-on suite is included the data downloader the uh we have a mentoring program the fast forward training um basically we throw the kitchen sink at the pro trader uh, and we are continuing to add to, I've been working on a project for a long time for, uh, to add to the essential add-on suite, which is a, a better uh, static Superdome. So we'll be having that. Hopefully some of our traders will maybe get a uh, beta of that the next month. So that's all coming. So you get all of that and, and all that's, part of just being part of our trading family okay oh i guess you need to know where to go to do that um look in the chat here and there's the link to our website So we open the trade room at 9 a.m. Eastern time. I come on the mic at 9.35 a.m. And then we trade until noon. You don't need level two data to trade uh, for the charting. I like level two data because it does help me with watching the prices change on a chart. I mean, uh, on the Superdome. But you can do add that later. If you just want to get data um, and get a data feed, you do not need level two for our indicators. 78.5, that's that's we're we're pretty consistent. Marshall is the guy that keeps the stats for us. He's our auditor also. Marshall does a uh he's a uh a budget analyst for a large corporation. So he's all about the numbers. He loves to track numbers. So uh, yeah, I think 78.5 is, I'm pretty happy with that. We have been up in the 80s, the low, you know, 80 point something. Uh, I'm good with 78.5. Yeah, we do have a number of people from Australia that come to our trade room. Uh, now, if you want to trade London, uh, it works just fine in the uh, London also. We do have a number of traders that, that prefer that. Wow, look at Keith. I'm going to have to get you on the payroll, man. This is awesome. Take a quick look at what Keith posted there. Got a lot of good links there. And if you've got any other questions, bring them on Saturday. Or you can email us. You see this over here on the side. Support at the intentional trader.com. If you're still curious but don't quite understand what you saw, I'll be happy to talk with you or help you understand. So, help you navigate these shark infested wa uh, trading waters. 